You want the crucible? I am the crucible. Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Destiny video. Today we're hopping back into Rumble for a brand new challenge that I just created. I like to call it the Lord Shacks Challenge, but I think I'm going to rename it to the Iron Lord Challenge. So I've got my guy looking at as much like Lord Shacks as I possibly can. I'm rocking a new weapon from every Iron Lord, so we're rocking the Timurals Lash, the Ephrodite Spear, and the Yolder's Hammer. All year one Iron Banner weapon, as well as the Ghost Shell that matches Lord Shacks. Now for the gear, we're rocking the iron leg, so I want to wear one piece of iron banner gear, as well as one piece of gear that I would like to see become an iron piece of gear. What would basically be my own iron piece of gear. So we're rocking the year one Charles Bosiris chest plate that actually gives you additional hand cannon and special weapon ammo. So if I had to choose any piece of gear in this game, that would be the one that I would choose to be my own personal iron gear, would definitely be that chest piece. I'm going into Rumble as Lord Shoulder Charge today and we are going to be shoulder charging as many people as possible as well as rocking those year one iron banner weapons and after this game they're going to be calling me lord shoulder charge that was almost perfect because we did get twilight gap and as lord shax likes to say there's never a battle like twilight gap so this is definitely the perfect map to be an iron lord on now we did start in with a bit of a deficit because i got late joined in here only about three kills though so it shouldn't be too bad to come back from and i'm going to be shoulder charging as many people as possible today now this Timurals Lash is quite overpowered. I wouldn't say it's overpowered per se, but it is about a three shot kill so long as you land a headshot and it almost has max impact. Now I'm also rocking Lightner Grenades, but like I said, I do want to shoulder charge as many people as possible as I will become Lord Shoulder Charge by the end of this game. They're gonna have to make an artifact where you are immune to shoulder charge damage after this game for sure because I'm gonna be shoulder charging as many people as possible. Now I'm not rocking the Mark 44 stand asides. Honestly, I don't really like to run those. I do think they're pretty good if you're shoulder charging, but I'm trying not to run it because that helmet was the only one I had. The Im helmet of Inmost Light was the only one I had to make my guy look as much like Lord Shaxx as possible. And if I don't look like an Iron Lord, I'm not gonna play like an Iron Lord. Now for my mark, I decided to run the mark of the Sunforge. I had the Iron Banner mark on, but to be honest with you, it just didn't look that cool. And I wanted to look like a straight Iron Lord badass. So I had to strap on the mark of the Sunforge just so I had that hammer on my waist while I was running around. Definitely looks pretty sick. It's the best looking mark in my opinion in the game. You just have a glowing hammer on your waist. It's pretty damn sick, as you can see right there. So I'm kind of lacking in the shoulder charges right now. It's 245 to 720, but we're about to come back here. Go on a little bit of a kill streak as well with this Timoral Slash and the Wailerun's March. I decided to switch up to the Wailerun's March because the Everdeed Spear didn't have a scope that I liked at first. I was running that, and then I tried like one game out, and I just realized that the scope wasn't exactly for me, and I went ahead and switched over to the Wailerun's March for this pretty sick holographic looking site. The ViewTac SLH20, this is one of my favorite scopes in the game. I didn't even realize it existed for quite a while. I just got my first sniper with it on and I didn't really, I liked the icon of it and I was like, whoa, I haven't really seen that before. And I put it on and I found out this is honestly one of my new favorite scopes to use. And I really do wish I had it on my thousand yard stare. It just gives you better radius to see and you're not like locked into the side. When you aim down a lot of scopes, the right and the left of your scope will actually be blacked out. But for this one, you can actually still see quite clearly and it doesn't actually like take up that much of your screen. The only thing that's missing is third eye so I can see my radar, but really you don't really need it too much. And honestly, this is definitely my new favorite scope in the game. I'm trying to get it on as many snipers as possible now before the Rise of Iron. And who knows, we might even see some new scopes in the game once Rise of Iron comes out. I'd definitely be interested to see that as well. Uh, don't ask me how this guy just meleeed me out of an unstoppable melee, because I do have that helmet on that grants me unstoppable. But, you know, that's just Bungie being Bungie, I guess. I was pretty low on health. But if I'm unstoppable, I'm not really too sure why I was just stoppable. The helmet doesn't make you invisible or anything, but still, I mean, they call it unstoppable. And then you're clearly stoppable almost every time. Now, this guy's up here trying to train to be a samurai master, but he doesn't realize that it's Lord's shoulder charge in the lobby with him. So let's try to get as many shoulder charges in as possible here. Oh, I'm going to have to super that guy. I do not want to risk another death. All right, so that was only a one shoulder charge this whole game, I believe. And I just got destroyed again by the Matador. It's all good, though. We're going to just start working towards the shoulder charges. Now that we finally have the lead, I had to work my way back from about four or five kill deficit. But now that we have the lead tied up and we're actually pulling ahead a little bit, I think it's time to get some shoulder charges in. So there's a really good example of this Tim Rose Lash just destroying people. This 95 damage to the head. Absolutely insane. Almost max impact. It's not fully maxed out, but it's almost there. And I believe if I had weapons like Bubble, I'd probably be able to one-shot somebody with this thing pretty easily. So there's one shoulder charge beat this guy down for a second melee. It wasn't a shoulder charge, but close enough. Now this guy is just hopping all over the place. I really don't want him to kill me. Going in for the shoulder. Oh, the uni. 
And that's really the only thing that can stop an Iron Lord, I guess. And now that Zerg just sold it for some reason, again, it looks like we're going to have another Trials of Osiris of straight unis. But it's all good, honestly. Just stay back. If, you, if you're reversing people with uni, just back up a few steps. The range on it isn't too, too, too good. And honestly, it's not too great either way. It's not as good as some of the party crashers anyways. The fire rate's way too slow. And if you have a good roll party crasher, it'll outbeat a uni almost any time. So honestly, now, there goes the heavy. So our chances of using the older's hammer is pretty much gone. But it's all good. I wasn't really planning on running the heavy anyways. I just pick it up so no one else can. Now I'm going to show this dude what Lord Shoulder Charge is all about today with that slide shoulder. If you guys didn't know, you can actually slide and then shoulder charge. It's pretty damn overpowered. I don't know. Like, I kind of feel like they should nerf it, to be honest, because you can also shotgun and then shoulder charge too, if you didn't know that. It's pretty ridiculous. You can shoot a shotgun bullet, slide, and then shoulder charge, and it, it won't even run out. I don't know if that's like something in the game that like it'll think that you're still running or not, or if Bungie even knows that that's an issue, but who knows? Maybe they want that in the game. I'm not really too sure. But in my opinion, I think it's a little ridiculous that you can slide and then shoulder charge or then shoot a bullet off and then somehow still be charged up enough to have a shoulder charge. It doesn't really make too much sense, but I definitely do use it to my advantage as much as I can while it still works. Now, I'm not running Mark 44 standicides like I said, but if you guys are planning on trialing this challenge out, I would almost put it on because shoulder charging with those is ridiculous. And turning around those tight corners with those things kind of does make a difference, especially if you use the slide method. It'll actually make it last just even longer so you can shoot a shotgun bullet slide and melee all within about two or three seconds and still have your shoulder charge. Now I also do want to touch on the issue of competitive play. I have been doing a little bit of competitive here and there, practicing a little bit in those 3v3s, but I do, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think shoulder charging should be banned from competitive play? Like, it's honestly a little overpowered, but at the same time, if they ban shoulder charging, I feel like they might need to ban like Stormcrawler as well. Now, I do believe that you that all exotic armor pieces are disabled while playing competitive, so that's actually pretty cool. But I don't think that they're banning any of the weapons, so so long as you're not running any exotic armor pieces, I think you're all right. So obviously, like the ram does need to be banned because that gives you extra health, and the Mark 44 standifieds definitely should be banned too because those shoulder charges with those are ridiculous. And I don't even know. Do you guys think shoulder charging should just be banned altogether, or do you think anything should be allowed because it's in the game? Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. I will be doing a bit of competitive play once private matches comes out. I do try to do a couple games every day, practicing a little bit here and there in some 3v3s, but it's really hard to find lobbies because everyone's just trying to find a specific team, and half the time you just end up getting free wins for about an hour before you even find out the game. And honestly, it's pretty dissatisfying, so I don't really try to do it too often. So there we go. We did come out with a win, getting about six or seven shoulder charges, and almost even beating these both two of these guys down in the end. So honestly guys, if you do end up trying this challenge out, be sure to leave a link to that in the comments. I definitely do want to check it out. And also be sure to leave any more challenges you want me to do in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.